Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it's time to finally film the video that you've all been asking for since I started my channel. It's time for the cooking segment. That's right, we're going to be cooking some crab today. Uh, waiting for the water to boil here, and uh, then we're just going to throw some in. Now, a lot of people use like Alaskan king crab or, you know, something real similar. I like to use ancient crab, though. That's right, we're actually going to find out uh, for hopefully the, well, in the fifth attempt, I guess it is. Hopefully we'll find out what is inside of a foil card. And I thought, well, we've hit it with a taser. Didn't have very good results. We put it in a microwave and it sparked, but other people refuse to admit that there's metal in here, and I still think there is. I've tried magnets with it. It's non-magnetic. Um, I've tried to measure the ohms uh, by stabbing it with uh, little probes, and I didn't get a whole lot of results. Uh, it was kind of inconsistent. And then we tried lighting it on fire, and uh, that just left ashes, uh, which could still be consistent with aluminum. Uh, now, I've had all kinds of people try to tell me that they are metal, they aren't metal, or it's kind of metal, or it's like a mineral, or it's just shiny. I think it's metal, because that's the only thing I know that can uh, do that in a microwave. So, if you haven't seen that video, definitely watch it. But uh, we're going to get this water boiling here, and I'm hoping it'll boil away the fibers, and then we'll be able to see a big sheet of metal. But uh, that probably won't happen, because, you know, that's just my luck. I'm not very scientific. Let's just turn on the heat here. All right, should be boiling any second. That's right, I'm just going to sit here filming until it boils. See you guys in about five minutes. I mean, if you gotta get up and go use the bathroom, maybe do some stretches, maybe boil a little water of your own, get some rice on. Just kidding, I'm just gonna cut to it boiling. All right, we got it nice and hot. Whoops. <laughs> It'd be great if I dropped this right on the coils. That would be about how most of my videos go. <laughs> All right, let's drop it in and see what happens. Oh, wow. Oh, hey, look at that. All magic cards uh, float with the back up. Who knew? Now, I think we might have to assist this a little bit. Hold on. Sorry about the shaky camera work. Hopefully YouTube will correct it. There we go. I'm sure I'm not going to burn my hand. Well, come, just stay down. Wow, these really float. I guess we're learning something already. See? Science! There we go. Okay, I'm going to have to drop this knife like really soon. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I think I see the layers separating. We might have... Ooh, oh, that's hot. Ow, ow. Well, uh, there's the blue adhesive. Um... That's so how you can tell it's a legit magic card if it's blue. What else can I hold this down with? Let's see. Hmm, something that doesn't conduct. I don't know. How about the actual spatula? There we go. Whoop, jeez. Come on. Well, it's separating. I, it's actually melting the glue. I thought I'd have to wait for it to um, kill all the paper fibers, but it's actually melting the glue. Boy, this is hard to pin down. There we go. I mean, I'm sure it's still getting to the same temperature. You know, boiling water is 212 Fahrenheit on the dot, depending upon elevation. So, uh, that's as hot as the card can get without being exposed to steam, actually. So I'm going to keep this held down under here for a little bit, and we'll check back shortly. Well, I'm letting it cool down right now, but you can see it's separated into two distinct layers, so I think we'll definitely have a uh, final definitive answer shortly, at least hopefully. Well, here is the final result. It's separated right on the blue resin, as you can see here. Uh, that's the adhesive that they use. This is just pure paper. It's uh, the bulk of the paper. It's very thick. You can see I ripped it here. Um, so yeah, this is the paper portion. That's what's left of the back. And the front is this, whoops, I should actually pan over, is this ultra thin, like ridiculously thin. I don't know. I mean, that looks like plastic to me. It doesn't actually look like metal, but it still has, whoops, still has that foil look. You can see, I mean, I had heard that they print on top of the foil material, whether it be plastic or aluminum, but I just couldn't tell you by the weight, the feel, the smell, everything. I just can't figure out what this is. I do have a way to test it though, hopefully. This, ladies and gentlemen, is extremely hot citric acid. 
It's about 75% citric acid from what I can see. It's just starting to boil here. I got it nice and hot. Doesn't have to be too hot though, so we'll turn off the burner. And we're going to throw this in. Now I didn't have any hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid or any of that laying around. So um, if I throw this in and it starts bubbling like crazy and hissing and hydrogen comes off and then probably lights on fire and blows my eyebrows clear off, then it is definitely metallic. If it just sits there and does nothing, then it's plastic because plastics aren't affected by citric acid as far as I know. So let's find out. Oh! It's bubbling like you wouldn't believe. Wow. I think that means it's metal. There's a way to test if that's hydrogen coming off, but I don't feel like losing my eyebrows right now, so... That was just instantly hissing. I mean, unless citric acid, like... I don't know, reacts with ink or something. I mean, just, just look at the bubbles coming off of there. They're just coming off. I really, really, really think that that's actually metal. And I really thought so after the microwave test as well. So this is really, really interesting. I'm going to leave it in there for a while. And uh, unfortunately, if this is like aluminum and it's oxidizing, I won't really be able to tell what aluminum oxide looks like. I mean, it's just kind of pale. It's kind of powdery. Um, but the bubbles, I think, are really, really telling. And it's kind of like getting done bubbling here. That's actually kind of weird. I mean, it should keep reacting at any temperature. Hmm. Let it go for a while and we'll see what happens. Well, I wish I could say we have an official result, but we don't. I mean, yeah, it hissed and bubbled immediately and there was what looked like hydrogen coming off of it. And I can't imagine what other reaction would be going on, but it still has that shiny sheen to it and not just because it's wet take my word for it and i looked at the back of it it is kind of more pale i mean there's no way my camera will pick it up but i don't know this really does look and feel now like a sheet of plastic and it kind of felt like it had metal in it before i don't know it could just be because i got it hot again or maybe the acid did something, but I still can't tell if it's plastic or metal. I just can't believe this. But I would think plastic, or most plastics, not all of them, would actually melt at about 212 degrees. So that's weird. So it feels right now like the material on a Mylar balloon, which I don't know if that's metal either. I feel like it's probably not. I think it's just really, really flat, shiny plastic. So, I guess we're never really going to know. Oh boy, I have a couple more experiments in mind, but for now, it remains a mystery. Just kidding. I'm going to light this sucker on fire and see what happens. Oh boy. This, um, this seems dangerous. Hmm. Now that acted like plastic. Look at that. Rolled over and crinkled just like plastic would when it gets hot. Hmm. I mean, I don't think metal would do that. So maybe foils are plastic after all. But then again, maybe I got rid of all the metal when I hit it with the citric acid. So I mean, not a definitive answer, but uh, I don't know. Let's smell it. It doesn't smell like burning anything. Kind of smells like citric acid, <laughs> unfortunately. So, yep. The funny thing is it's it's not catching on fire. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's, ow, that was hot. That's something that uh, metal would not do. So the, at least a portion of the remainder is plastic. I think right now we're going to have to say this experiment suggested that it didn't have metal in it but the microwave test did. I mean, I've never seen a plastic that you throw in the microwave and it sparks as if it was metal. But I'm not that sure how uh, microwaves work. So, who knows? Maybe it's some kind of electrically conductive plastic or, well, that doesn't really exist except for super cold superconductors. So, I guess it's uh, one vote each. This experiment says plastic and the microwave says metal. I guess we'll never know.